what sort of policies are you running on as an independent this time? What are the issues? Well, look, if I could just initially say that it was never my intention to leave the Liberal National Party. Um, I knew that Malbruff was stacking out the branches, sort of building up numbers simply for the purpose of being able to defeat me at a pre-selection. And so consequently, when I was given the opportunity of being elected as Speaker of the House of Representatives, having been privileged to serve the people of Fisher and the Sunshine Coast for some 23 years, I thought, well, I can put my experience to work to, to give something back. Some people have suggested I did it for the money, which is absolutely ridiculous because I would have done it for nothing. I knew that our parliament operated well in some respects and I knew in other respects it was an embarrassment to the country. And so I accepted uh, nomination um, as Speaker as, and I was elected unopposed and I sought to do the very best job that I could to reform the parliament, to make the government of the day, regardless of what it was, accountable, to make question time more interactive. My hope is that in maybe 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years, we'll have a situation where we will have an independent speaker because as an independent speaker, it meant that anyone on either side, any side, could come to see me. I was able to impose discipline on the House. I was able to uh, exercise my authority under the standing orders and I wasn't beholden to any party and that's the, the idea of the UK Parliament where you've got an independent speaker in the Westminster tradition and, and, and that means that the speaker is able to operate without sort of fear or favour or um, without sort of um, criticism from his or her former party colleagues. Uh, unfortunately in Australia um, Maybe we're not quite ready for that. Um, and so I resigned from the Liberal National Party of Queensland, not because I wanted to, uh, but because I was, wanted to be an independent speaker, firstly. And secondly, I knew I was being stacked out and I knew that the Liberal National Party, uh, or at least the new stackies that Mal Braff was bringing in, was preparing me for crucifixion and it wasn't an even sort of Good Friday. Uh, look, having said that, um, as an independent, you are right, it does give me the opportunity to deal with both sides of Parliament, and if I'm re-elected, and I realise it's a David and Goliath battle, um, I do have the capacity to deal with both sides over the last 18 months since uh, Ashby Gate, which was obviously largely engineered by uh, Mel Bruff, um, as Justice Rare has um, found and made adverse findings against Mal Bruff and others. And what's interesting is that Mal Bruff, unlike others against whom Justice Rarer's uh, made adverse um, findings, has not sought to challenge in the court. He's not sought leave to appeal the findings of Justice Rarer. So Mal Bruff is prepared to leave on the public record unchallenged as far as he is concerned the findings of Justice Rarers. Uh, others who were the subject of uh, adverse findings, Ashby, uh, Ashby Solicitor Harmer, have sought leave to appeal. Mal Bruff was happy to accept the judge's rulings about him, which were very negative. And basically what the judge said was the Ashbygate legislation, or sorry, the Ashbygate litigation, uh, what the judge said was the Ashbygate litigation uh, which Malbruff tried to persuade Clive Palmer to fund and Clive was too smart to fall for that trick because he could see that there was nothing in it. Uh, he thought that um, it was obviously designed for Malbruff's advantage and as he said, uh, we don't need people who tell lies to be elected to Parliament. Uh, and so sort of Malbruff's been enmeshed in this, you know, from day one. Uh, he and I because he's failed to uh, accept my challenge, which has been extended to him on uh, two or more occasions, to debate me over Ashbygate, um, uh, given the judge's adverse findings against him, uh, I therefore uh, submitted to him 13 questions which related to uh, the level of his involvement in Ashbygate. I mean, why on earth would Ashby 
uh, send to Bruff at Bruff's request um, pages from my diary. Why on earth would he have a whole series of meetings with 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 Ashby? You know, why would he email Ashby on the 18th of um, April and, and say there could be a problem? So Mel Bruff's in this up to his neck, as the judge found, and yet he did not seek to challenge the judge's findings. Now, also, I mean, it's pretty obvious that given the uh, complaint to the Australian Federal Police made by Mr Graham Perrett, MP, about Bruff's conduct and the conduct of others, uh, Mel Bruff will be subject to scrutiny by the Australian Federal Police in the fullness of time. Uh, and my prediction is that uh, if in the unlikely and unfortunate event that Mel Bruff is elected as the member for Fisher on the 7th of September, the electors official will be returning to the polls within six to 12 months for a by-election. So Mel Bruff, you know, is a walking sort of by-election sort of in action. So a vote for Mel Bruff is a vote for a by-election for the future, in my view, because there's so much odium about him. Um, there are so many unanswered questions that he refuses to answer. He's not challenged the judge's decision. And so we have a situation where we've got a candidate who's not fit to be a candidate. I'm surprised the Liberal National Party of Queensland has not disendorsed him. Uh, Tony Abbott has refused to back Mel Bruff on a number of occasions, as we've read in the mainstream media. And the question I ask to the people of Fisher, if Tony Abbott's not prepared to back Mel Bruff, why would you? There is, in my view, a feeling out there in the community that there ought to be a change of government. But that change of government is going to occur regardless of whether or not Mel Bruff is elected. On eight occasions, the electors of Fisher have chosen me as their parliamentary representative and I'm seeking their ongoing support on the 7th of September. Now, there's no doubt that I've been subjected to uh, a media and public attack over the last 18 months, which has been wearing on my wife Inga, on, on me, on my children, on my parents who are now in their 80s, on my extended family. And I am proud of what I've achieved for Fisher and the Sunshine Coast more generally in the area of infrastructure. And had Bruff not become involved in Ashbygate, had Ashbygate not occurred, there would have been tens of millions of extra government dollars flow to Fisher. And I had been to the Minister for Infrastructure after I was elected Speaker, and I wasn't elected Speaker with conditions. He, the, the, Mr Albanese rang me on the morning that Mr Speaker Jenkins had decided to resign to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, I ask your permission to put your name forward for the Labor caucus to be nominated as Speaker of the House of Representatives. And I said, yes. Um, but sometime afterwards, uh, I went to him and I said, look, I will want a few things, you know. Um, I, don't, I won't break the government, but I want things like the Mullaney viewing platform and I want improvements for the Caloundra tennis courts and I want CCTV cameras and I want a whole series of things for my electorate. And he said, look, there'll be no problem. And then Ashbygate descended. And of course, Ashbygate wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for Mal Bruff. And so the Sunshine Coast has been starved of tens of millions of dollars uh, because of Ashbygate and because of Mel Bruff's involvement. Mel Bruff has brought forward some sort of minuscule promises, you know, TV, CCTV cameras in certain places, and I think they're my support, actually, that policy. Uh, but he's said that each of the five surf clubs, five or six surf clubs in Fisher, are going to get $25,000 over five years, a mere miserable $5,000 a year, um, to upgrade their equipment and training and that sort of thing. And while I applaud the work done by the volunteers of our life-saving clubs, some of them are local, some of them are from further afield, uh, I mean, what he's really promised, uh, he's promised peanuts. And these clubs should be supported to a much greater degree. Uh, and unfortunately, what he has indicated before he's elected is that the LNP is prepared to treat the electors of Fisher with contempt. He's sort of thrown out a few you know, paltry crumbs 
hoping that the elected official will be prepared to stand up and pick them up. Now, from a personal point of view, uh, we have a key issue here on the Sunshine Coast, and that is infrastructure. In fact, three issues. Infrastructure, infrastructure and infrastructure. And their infrastructure to meet the needs of our growing population. Every night we've got some 450,000 heads on beds on the Sunshine Coast, but maybe only 300,000 or slightly less uh, of those people are permanent residents. And unfortunately we're funded only for our permanent residents and not for the people who use our facilities. And visitors, of course, use our facilities, uh, community facilities, as you would expect, uh, in the same way that residents do. I fought for the upgrade of the Bruce Highway to six lanes all the way from Brisbane to the Sunshine Coast. In government, I was able to achieve an upgrade uh, from Brisbane to Caboolture. And at the time, that removed the worst bottleneck between Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast. But as our population has continued to grow, as more and more people want to come to the Sunshine Coast, uh, we need to, uh, to finish the job. We need six lanes all the way from Brisbane to the Sunshine Coast. I've had the current government uh, commit um, over $80 million to fixing up bits of the Sunshine Coast. But as an independent, um, I've been able to interest both parties at last in putting forward multi-billion dollar promises to upgrade the Bruce Highway, which of course, uh, as you would know, is a, is a vital arterial highway uh, for, for Queensland. Uh, also, I've been pushing for a whole lot of other things and since I've become an independent, I've actually been able to get support from government for things like the $46.8 million for the health and wellbeing precinct um, adjacent to the Sunshine Coast uh, University Hospital. That will um, educate, enrol nurses uh, and will also educate uh, um, paramedical people who I suppose, if that's the right term, but people who will feed into the Sunshine Coast University Hospital. But like many other Sunshine Coast residents, I'm appalled that the uh, LNP promised a Sunshine Coast University Hospital that would be a major public hospital and now they're, th they're threatening to flog it off to private interests. Now. Uh, even if the hospital remains free to the public, the fact that it's run by a for-profit uh, organisation means that maybe some of the more expensive treatments won't be available here, maybe people will still have to travel to Brisbane, and I think that's a major concern. The, the uh, Liberal National Party coalition uh, have a flawed policy on the NBN. And here on the Sunshine Coast, I've been able to accelerate the rollout of the NBN uh, to a whole range of suburbs within Fisher, as yet Sippy Downs has not been included, which makes no sense given the fact that the University of the Sunshine Coast, which is one of the key drivers of our economy, is situated at Sippy Downs. And so I'll I've written to the Chief Executive of the NBN Co to have sort of Sippy Downs brought forward as well. Uh, but I think that's uh, particularly important. Significantly, I also obtained a recently seed funding of some $800,000 um, and of course the tennis fraternity will put in the rest to upgrade um, the Calandra Tennis Course into the Sunshine Coast Regional Tennis Centre. I think that's really important. But what is important is that the uh, people of the Sunshine Coast recognise that September 7 is a watershed election. I think there is a feeling out there that there ought to be a change of government. The change of government is going to occur whether or not Malbruff is elected as the LNP member for Fisher. A vote for Malbruff is a real risk and a vote for Malbruff, in my view, is a vote for a by-election which is going to cost some $700,000 in 6 to 12 months time. One of the things about being an elected member of parliament is that every three years you sort of have to put your hand up uh, for re-election, you have to reapply for your job and in a democracy that's a healthy thing. And the fact that ten people have put their names forward for election to be member for Fisher is a very healthy sign in our Australian democracy and so I applaud the fact that ten people 
have been prepared to do that. Um, I have um, looked at the qualities of the other nine people and I think that Mel Bruff offers least to the community. He was the member for Longman, uh, he forgot that he had a local constituency, uh, he strutted the national stage. At the 2007 election he had the biggest swing against him of any then Liberal member. He just wants to use Fisher as a means to crawl back into Parliament uh, and hopefully uh, get a ministry. But my own personal view is that Tony Abbott would look at the smell around Melbrough, look at the odium, look at the accusations, look at the complaints of the AFP and would find that Melbrough is uh, too, much, uh, too much of a risk. I think there's also a sense of alienation uh, with politics um, and uh, that was one of the reasons that Pauline Hanson was elected when she was, you know, I think in 1996. Uh, a sense of a lot of people being disconnected from the political process. Um, you ask where have the votes for the minor parties come from? I think they've come from across the spectrum. Uh, there are people who are disillusioned with both major parties and I think that's why the minor parties and uh, hopefully me as the now independent member for Fisher uh, will be able to attract people from both sides uh, and uh, I um, am hopeful that I will receive the continuing endorsement of local people at the poll on 7th of September. Uh, it's been a great privilege to be elected on eight occasions um, and I'm hoping to be elected on a ninth occasion but I am aware that um, probably for the first time in my political career I'm not the favourite uh, and I am fighting an uphill battle but I'm fighting it with all of the fortitude and the ability and the enthusiasm um, that I can muster and I've got lots of all of those qualities.